you gotta motivate. Get up and keep going. Celebrate this life you've been holding. Demonstrate your love and devotion. And everybody get up and get up. It's time to get it moving, y'all. Step up your game. You gotta motivate. Get up and keep going. Celebrate this life you've been holding. Demonstrate your love and devotion. And everybody get up and get up. Motivate. Get up and keep moving. Celebrate this life is no illusion. Demonstrate the skills you've been using. Get up and get up. Yeah, welcome back to yet another review by Zombill. In today's review, we're going to do uh, a coil rebuild. And actually, let's talk about that for a second. Let's have a vape real quick. <laughs> well, you know, the last two, three weeks, there's been some uh, topic of discussion that's come up about right here about this little bugger the Atlantis coil head now the thing that's come up about this is is that the wiki material that are in these coil heads specifically these two big chunks here are some kind of silica mixed ceramic cotton type material. I don't know if I'm exactly correct about that, but the thing is, is that I think Aspire may have kissed the pooch on this one, so to speak, because the trouble is, and I can't take credit for this because this actually goes to, let me see if I can find his name real quick. There's a post that was made um, back on December 13th and it's on the Vaping Underground uh, about what the material in the Atlantis wick is made out of compared to let's say organic cotton or straight silica. Now this guy um, what's his name? Derek Small okay I'm gonna have uh, links in the description box down below but uh, he's took it upon himself to inform the community that and, and you know there's been a lot of people that's had problems with this because apparently if you vape on an actual Atlantis coil head stock don't rebuild it or rewick it I should say that the outer cotton area burns off and then the stuff that's in these two chunks that I showed you earlier which ah, here they are these here uh, apparently they flake off and get inside people's mouths and what's even worse than that is is that if they're flaking off then that means that they're going into the lungs so James Martin aka Uncle Dagger made a tutorial about how to just re-wick your Atlanta school head so I can't take credit for that either but I am going to show my peeps how to do it. So let's have another quick vape off of this Atlantis. And yes, the coil head that's in this is actually rebuilt. Um, the footage that you're about to see, I just did prior to this introduction. And this is the actual coil head that I just rebuilt. Now that's at 35 watts. Now this of course is on my Sarah mod. Now I've had this on a few other mods so I can jump up to 50. But I find that uh, between 27 and a half and 35 is where uh, the build, well not the build, but the re-wicking that Uncle Dagger does in his video is where the taste on my part comes through really good. And so, 
let's just jump right down into it and then we'll come back. As I am about to show you how to re-wick this, um, all you're basically going to need is your Atlantis coil head, a uh, strip of cotton, and some scissors. And what I like to use is a three millimeter precision tool, and I'll show you exactly how that comes in handy. It's this part of the precision tool that I'm, I'm going to be needing <clears throat> in order to place the coil back right in position. Kind of like a, uh, a pick tool, a uh, jeweler's pick, I suppose, or you could use a dental pick. So that is the other tool that we will need. So we're going to start this off by pulling out the base of the coil, which would be the pin, after we drop it a few times. So we pulled that out. Now if you look, <clears throat> if you look down in here, you can see there's a lead over here and there's a lead over here and then you can also see the coil down there surrounded by the uh, silica type ceramic cotton wick stuff that we're going to be changing and there goes my focus now we pull out the insulator you want to be careful in doing that So now we've got the insulator pulled out. Now, we flip it around, you look down in there, you'll see that there's a mesh screen. <clears throat> We're just going to take and gently pick that out of there with the pick tool. Like so. You don't want to lose this. That's important to uh, keep, to put back in. It protects from uh, spit back, from your juice spitting back into your mouth. Okay. So next you want to take and push in the two leads that I showed you earlier. Push those into the inside. And you're going to take your 3 millimeter precision tool <clears throat> and you're going to carefully place that in the center and you're just going to gently push up until the whole thing pops out just like so now go ahead and remove that <clears throat> now these four holes that are around here you see those two of those are open that's where your juice flow goes through is the two the two open holes now the other two holes have a a metal screen backing it of sorts that you see if you look down inside that center shaft ugh, I need to adjust the focus here Now, if you look down inside that center shaft, you'll see that there's a metal shelf there and a metal shelf there. Now, what you need to do is, is there's a there's an outside layer of cotton here on this whole stack. This piece here. This is very important. Now, you'll play hell on fire trying to get this whole piece back inside of the coil housing. But what you want to do is, is you're going to want to take and cut two sections off of this. Because you're going to be, this is where those two sections that go over those, those, those holes that are backed by that metal housing there. Because we've got to put those 
down inside behind those metal how behind those metal shells housing shells whatever you want to call it this needs to go behind those so that they stick through and show through the uh, the two holes that have the metal behind them we're gonna keep the ones that don't have anything behind them open because that's where our cotton is going to be coming through on top of the coil. So just by eyeing it, it looks like you're going to have, let's see, about one, two, and then a third piece left over in case you need to use it, uh, in case one of the other two pieces get messed up. Now you're going to take, you're going to want to take one of those two pieces that you cut off of that surrounding cotton. And you're gonna you're gonna stick it down inside of that where those metal shelvings are or metal housings are. So this is this is the tricky part. Now, once, once you've gotten it part of the way in, it'll start showing through in the whole set that you've got it going down into. Now you can use, let me get this to focus a little bit better here. Now you can use your little metal pick to take and bring that in further that way And see, that's exactly the way it should look. See how we have the, uh, how that's tucked behind there like that? That's what you want. And that's going to cover up <clears throat> that one hole there. Now we want to take and do that for the, uh, the other side too, that has that metal housing. So now once you have that done, you'll have both of those holes filled up with that cotton sheath that was around the coil head. Now, the coil head and the old wicking material. This is the stuff that is the, uh, the problem. So we're going to take and remove this, throw this away. And then you want to take and just slightly lift up on this coil head here to where you have it at kind of a degree angle sort of like this almost like a 90 degree angle Now, we want to take your cotton strip that you cut out, and we're going to have to cut that down a little bit further. 
because we need to make this fit the coil head so I've got about I need to trim it down about half more from what I have you see that there I gotta trim it down about half of what I have on this sheet here so what I need to do is I need to take this sheet and we're gonna have to trim it up about half where it'll fit the entire coil head and it won't it won't give us any trouble but we also need to make sure that we don't have too much going over because if we have too much cotton going over we're not going to be able to put it back inside the metal housing inside the coil head housing and I have way too much excess here. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take and just kind of dry wrap it over. And just kind of estimate how much I need to cut off. Because really, all you need is you just need about two wraps. So we're going we're gonna to go like this. And we're going to go over just a little bit more. And eyeballing it, it should be about right here it might be a little bit too much so as you can see this is what we're left with now it's just a, a piece of the sheet that was like that and we cut it we trimmed it down to about this yes. take some juice and you're going to take and get you're going to get this cot wet so that it's a little bit more pliable to stick to the coil head. Okay, so we're going to dab some juice on here. And we're going to kind of press it down a little bit to where it's translucent. And we're going to pick that up. And we're going to take and we're going to put it on the coil head. And we're going to kind of we're going to kind of press that onto the coil head. If I could stop dropping it here. And we're going to wrap this over. And you want to do a kind of tight wrap, too. Not so tight that you're going to end up breaking the cotton, but tight enough that it's going to stick to the coil. Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to take and put this lead back down, like so. And you want to make sure that both sides are still open because that's where your airflow is. Now, in order to do that, you want to take that pick that we were using earlier and you're just going to you're just going to put it in to the bottom of the coil head. And you're just going to poke it through. Just poke it through. That's all you're going to do. Just poke it through. So now we have it fully open from the top down okay, to the so bottom. We're going to put the three, mil three millimeter precision tool in through the base of the coil. Just like so. Now the coil is wrapped with the wet cotton. And you've got it re-wicked. So now we're going to put it through the base 
of the housing of the coil head. You want to put it through the base, not the top section that we poked it out from, but we're going to put it in through the base. And to do this, you want to kind of hold both the leads with the tool, and you just want to slowly put it in there. And if it gets hung up, just give it a little bit of a twist. Just a little bit of a twist. Just like that. And now we have it all the way in there. And you want to make sure that both of your leads are still on the outside of the housing. So now I'm going to have to poke it back through just a little bit. Now leave your precision tool in there and kind of take and put the leads over to the sides. Now we're going to take the insulator that we removed earlier and we're going to drop that down onto the leads and we're going to leave one of the leads sticking out on the top. And the other lead is just going to go might have a little bit of trouble getting this insulator back in there, but be a little bit gentle with it. Take your time. And when you have that done, you'll have one lead still on the uh, touching the metal housing, and it'll be on the opposite side of the lead that is sticking out on top of the insulator. Now we just want to take and put this pin in there. So you're going to take the three millimeter tool back out and you're going to take and you're going to make sure that the one lead is still on the on the insulator and then completely opposite you want to make sure that lead that's touching the metal housing is still touching the metal housing and then you basically just take and put the lead or put your pin I mean down inside there like that now you're going to want to take and straighten up the coil head too so just take and that way it's centered And that's, that's what it'll basically look like when it's centered. Okay, so now all we need to do is put the splash guard back in there. And we'll be ready to put it back in the Atlantis tank and be vaping. So you just take the metal splash guard stick it down on the inside take your little pick and just tuck it down and it'll look just like that to where you can see all the way down through there just like you could yeah. before. And of course as you can see now it's come out to be 0.59 ohms or 0.6 ohms which Hey, that's right on the money. So, we'll go ahead and install it into the tank, and we'll go back up main view and see what it apes like. Okay, so now I'm showing you how to rebuild it, and of course I already showed you how it performs, but let's see, let's see it again. Nothing but vape. Hour. Ooh, clouds galore and the taste is superb because it's organic cotton. It's straight organic cotton that I used in this just like Uncle Dagger did in his rewicking tutorial. So, of course now, I can't take credit for any of this. It was just a redo on my part because I wanted to make sure that the word is getting around out there because I care about my peeps, you know. 
And yes, I do know that there are people that are going to be like, oh, well, we can't, can't let it get overblown because, you know, the FDA is looking at us. Yes, I realize the FDA is looking at us. However, you know, when we started this whole vaping thing years ago, it was for harm reduction. You know, and if stuff like this gets out there and you start vaping on it and it flakes off and goes into your lungs, What's the long-term harm reduction in that? So, before I start getting blasted by whoever comes along and watches this video, just keep in mind. Yes, I realize that this product does get you off the stinkies. And I do realize that this is for instant harm reduction, as you're not smoking 4,000 or 7,000 chemicals after you light a cigarette. But let's just keep in mind that the longer we vape, what are the effects going to be of the material that was in this or in the stock coils that we purchased to replace the coils with? You know, a little five minute fix that would ensure that the harm reduction is good in the long term. I think, you know, that kind of plays a big part in this. So let's not think about instant gratification, folks. Let's think about long term as well. So that's all I got for you right now, my peeps. I hope you enjoyed this review. I'm going to have plenty more coming up. I hope you all had a happy holiday. And from Zombville and my peeps to you, happy vaping.